welcome back to the channel. I got my coffee. Let's talk about cartridges. All right, so today I want to talk about some of the newer cartridges. 6.5 Creedmoor, it's fairly new. 6.5 PRC, the 6.8 Western. Some of these cartridges have become very popular. And what's my thoughts on them? So first off, I'll tell you that I do prefer other cartridges over those. I prefer the 65284 over the 65 Creedmoor. And I think a 260 or a 65 Swede is just as good. I prefer a 270 Short Mag over the 68 Western, mainly because a little bit more case capacity, and I just am not intending to shoot the heaviest bullets in the 270 caliber. Um, I've got other things, other calibers, other cartridges to do that with, other guns, and so I just don't feel a need to have a very heavy bullet per caliber for that cartridge. So I kind of like the 270 short mag a little better. And then once again, I prefer the 65284 more than the 65 PRC. <clears throat> the 65284 is just like a good compromise in between the Creedmoor. 260 or 65 Swede and then up to the 65 PRC. It's kind of right in the middle there, closer to the PRC in performance. And so I prefer the 270 short mag and the 65 284 over some of those new cartridges. But I will say, I like these new cartridges. I like the design behind them. I like how they're thinking about long range, heavier high BC bullets, efficiency, I feel like overall the designs of these new cartridges is just more efficient, better for long range, and of course it's coupled with faster twist rate barrels and a chamber more designed for match grade accuracy than just for hunting use. So in all honesty, I think they're really cool. So if there's a new shooter out there and he is just getting into firearms and and bolt action rifles and whether it's hunting or long range shooting whatever the case and he has no nostalgia or no history or no you know uh, feelings for old cartridges and he starts a collection and he wants a 6.8 western and he wants a 6.5 prc in all honesty i think those are great choices i'm not confident the 6.8 western will be a success i think if I had to choose between it and the 270 short mag, I think the 6.8 Western is going to catch on. Um, and then eventually other bullet manufacturers will reluctantly start to sell it and manufacture for it because of its popularity. At the moment, it's only Browning and Winchester. So I'm not 100% confident in the success of the 6.8 Western, but I, I do think it will be successful. The 6.5 PRC has become very popular. But in all honesty, I think they're both great cartridges. They're not my personal favorites, but I'm actually a pretty big fan of both of them. So if a person was new to shooting and they got into shooting now and they picked those cartridges, I would tell them that they made a good choice. Now, if a person has got their grandpa's, you know, 30 six or their grandpa's 243, or they've got a seven mag, or even like me, I've got a 65284 and a 270 short mag, is there a reason to sell those guns or put them in the closet and, and buy new guns for these new calibers? I would say definitely not. You know, cartridges made a hundred years ago are still awesome. You know, like if you told me, hey, I want you to get a bolt action rifle set for hunting and for long range shooting, but you can only pick cartridges that were developed from 1915 and, and, and back, I would have no trouble. You know, if, I, if for African hunting, I could get the 375 H&H, um, I could get a 30 6 okay? I could get a seven millimeter Mauser, I could get a 6.5 Swede. I mean, there will be plenty of good old classic cartridges that are still around today and are still successful today. And you know, your 6.5, 284, and your 270 short mag are not classic or old, they're relatively newer, but they're not the new kids on the block anymore. But since I already have those guns 
and I'm established at least with the 65284. I'm just really getting started with the 270 short mag. You know, there's just no reason to get rid of those and move to the newer cartridges. They're gonna work just fine. Now there could become a day where nobody chambers for the 270 short mag or the 65284. I think that's a very real possibility. But since I hand load, I shouldn't have an issue. As long as I can get bullets for those calibers, and as long as I have cases and can find powder and primers, it's really not an issue. But if I wasn't a, a hand loader, or if you're watching this and you're not a hand loader and you have no intentions of ever hand loading, then it might be something to, to consider. Um, in that case, you may not even want to go with the newest cartridges. You might want to stick with the ones you know are going to last. You might want to stick with the 30 out 6 uh, 7 mag, 243, just really common rounds, 308, uh, that you know are never going to go away. Because then you're guaranteed ammo availability, and you know that you know gun manufacturers are never going to stop manufacturing guns in those chamberings. If you're like me, you know I just really like certain cartridges, and I base everything on if I like it or not. So back when I had my 65284 built. Um, I'm pretty sure there was no factory rifles available in it. Now there is. You know, it was um, Sammy Speck in 1999. Savage offers it. And there might be a few other ones, little higher-end gun manufacturers that do offer the chambering. But when I had it done, it was it, it had to be custom, right? So I just think it's a really cool cartridge, and so I just go with it. I'm more about what I just personally like. Like, I got my... 270 short mag in 2021. In all honesty, that would have been a good time to get a 6.8 Western and probably not a 270 short mag. It's probably on its way out, but I just got what I liked. So if you hand load and you get what you like, or you get what you think is cool, or you want to have something different, then there's no issues. Just do what you want to do. But if you're concerned about being able to find ammo and you don't hand load, definitely go with the more common cartridges, more common rifles. But getting back to these, these modern designs, I think they're cool. I even like the 6.5 Creed Bar. I know it's either loved or hated, and I'm not really on the love side of it. Having just said it's loved or hated, I, I guess I'm one of the few that's in the middle. I, I really like it. To me, it's a lot like a 243, but in a 6.5 millimeter. It's just, it's low recoil, it's easy to shoot, it's easy to hand load for, it's common. And it gets the job done. It's not the most powerful, but it gets the job done. Now, technically what I just said would be specifically what the 260 Remington is, because it literally is the 243 in a 6.5 millimeter. The only problem was when that 260 first came out, most of your rifles were either were chambered in either one in nine or one in ten twist. Now I think it's they have kind of jumped on the boat of one in eight is the way to go for 6.5. But that was kind of an issue. But the 260, oh my gosh, it's 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 phenomenal. It's basically the 6.5 Creedmoor, but just geared more toward hunting than long range shooting. But I've heard many people on YouTube or whatever the case talk about how they've used a 260 for a thousand yard competitions in that extremely well. So in all honesty, the 260 is just as good, maybe better than the 6.5 Creedmoor. But I've got no problems with the Cream War. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool, efficient design. I'm even more of a fan of the six millimeter Cream War. I really like that. But it definitely is overhyped. And you're gonna find that with these modern cartridges like the 6.8 Western, the 6.5 PRC, they're they're overhyped. It's when, when something becomes popular, it usually becomes popular for good reason. There is good things about it. It's not like it's completely a terrible cartridge and then it's all hype. No, there's legit good reasons to own it, to own any of these new cartridges. And therefore, the hype builds, the reputation builds. And then it gets a little out of hand, like the 6.5 Creedmoor got way out of hand. It became the greatest thing since sliced bread. And even though I like it, it's not the greatest thing since sliced bread. And especially if you're a hunter and you're thinking, 
it's nothing any different than the 6.5 Swede from 1892, you know. So if you're, if you're hunting, the Creedmoor is not that big of a deal, but it's, it's a low recoil, pretty neat little round that is popular. And the popularity is a big drawing factor. You can easily get rifles chambered in it. You can easily find ammunition. But if you're a hunter, you're thinking, what's the big deal about a 6.5 Creedmoor? I don't, I don't see the hype. I don't see the appeal. But all in all, I think that these new cartridges are really cool. I could foresee 20 years from now, um, no one knows even what a 65284 or a 270 short mag is, except for those of us that have been around. But everybody has a 68 Western, everybody has a 65 BRC. And I'm okay with that because I think they're really cool rounds and I think they deserve recognition. A couple more things I want to talk about with you today. Uh, so I did a video a while back, well, what is the perfect rifle cartridge? Because I have a perfect rifle cartridge series. And I know it's kind of a play on words and I, it's a little bit of a cop out, but I called the 280 actually improved the perfect rifle cartridge. And then at the same time I called the 30 6 the greatest rifle cartridge. And I called the seven millimeter odd eight the best all around rifle cartridge. And I actually stand by that. If you go back and watch that video, I kind of explain it more. But when I call the 280 actually improved the perfect rifle cartridge, I kind of think it is. Now, I change my mind all the time. I also posted a video about my top 10 favorite calibers. That probably changes every single day. But I really do like the 280 actually improved. And if you watch the Backfire channel, um, he's, he had, you know, the greatest hunting, the best all around hunting cartridge out there. And he's narrowed it down to two. Now this is based on fan voting. And I was pleasantly surprised <laughs> that the 280 actually improved made it to the final two. And of course I voted for it. And I just checked his poll. It looks like the seven mag is going to win, you know, and I don't disagree with that. The seven mag is a, is a cool round. And I believe on that same video, I said the best hunting cartridge probably is a seven mag because if you're hunting once again you don't care about efficiency you just want a little extra umph without being you know having to go to a magnum length cartridge um, action size without excessive recoil so a seven mag is a great option and i think it's probably going to win i think it's really cool that the 280 acme improved got as far as it did on the backfire tournament bracket you know i think it's pretty cool so that should tell you that you know I consider it one of the greatest cartridges of all time. Not all time, but just the perfect cartridge. Backfire fans have voted it up in the final two. It's really a cool cartridge. So I'm going to do a rifle cartridge review later today about the 280 Ackley Improved. Um, and I just think it's really cool. But I wanted to mention something about my rifle reviews. So I had a person comment on one of my videos like, where is your footage of you out in the, at the range shooting or where's the charts that you've developed and like basically where's your proof behind what you're saying well <clears throat> so I just wanted to clear that up I'm going to do rifle cartridge reviews on some cartridges that I don't own um, most of the ones I've done so far I do own or I have shot or I have some experience um, but not all and there's going to be some that I do that I don't have experience with personally but you got to realize this is a review on the cartridge okay every gun is going to shoot differently and every manufacturer is going to have different qualities so what if you at home had a you know a seven millimeter odd eight in a christensen arms really nice rifle you know good quality control at the factory you know a lot of handmade touches and it shoots like a dream and it's just tight tolerances. It just seems like it over um, surpasses what the books say it's gonna do. And you're so impressed and, you're, and you just love it. And you click on YouTube and you see my review on the seven millimeter odd eight. And maybe I have a Mossberg Patriot that doesn't shoot well. In fact, it's terrible. And no matter what I try to do to that rifle, I can't get it to shoot. And so you're thinking, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an idiot. So that's a bit of an extreme example, but you know, you, you, you can have a low end gun versus a high end gun, but in all honesty, you might have a Winchester model 70 that shoots like a dream. And I might have a Winchester model 70 that doesn't, 
So even the same gun, there could be a lemon here or there. So I can do a review about a cartridge and I'm not talking about how my gun shot the cartridge. Okay, I'm just really talking about design, about history, about ballistics, you know, and that's really what it's about. So the cartridge review is kind of like a baseline. You know, all things being equal, this is what, based on reload manuals, based on experience I've seen, this is what your cartridge can do. For instance, you also, you know, if you're hand loading, you could get the high, most high-end brass, match-grade primers, um, the best new powder, um, a superior bullet, and then you could have the cheapest brass you could find on online with you know 20 year old powder and not match grade primers and the cheapest brown nose bullets you could find they're not going to match up so when i do a cartridge review it's really based on the potential of the cartridge and i talk about its history its lineage you know what it can do how versatile is it you know what kind um, <clears throat> how big of a spread of bullet weights can it shoot and then what it might be good for you know applications that it's good for so I just want to clear that up so you might think well if you don't have a certain gun and a certain cartridge then how can you do a review about it but that's where I'm coming from it's it's not about how my gun shoots it or how my hand load shoots it it's about the cartridge re review itself now, I do want to do videos at some point about me hand loading and me shooting at the range, but that'll be a separate thing. Anyway, until next time, I hope this has been interesting to you and have a great day.